Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Fijians warned about other diseases due to dengue outbreak. Fiji gets 200 vehicles worth more than $17 million. And lawyers told to respect all religions. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. Fijians who are infected with the dengue virus have a high chance of being exposed to other potential infections if not given supportive care. Fiji Medical Association President Iferemi Wangainambete says hemolytic dengue is the most severe which can cause serious bleeding and death. Kelly Vadala reports. With over 800 confirmed dengue cases so far, Fijians are urged to seek medical attention even if they have the slightest fever or continuous joint pains. If there's no particular antibiotic, for example, that can be able to treat it and cure it all of a sudden, it's mostly supportive care. So that's why, in this instance, prevention is uh, the most important thing in relation to dengue. What we need to realize is when somebody is hit with dengue, and they're infected and they are weak, uh, it is, there is a potential for other forms of illness uh, to take that opportunity to come on board. The Health Ministry is advising people to be alert for dengue fever symptoms. If you have the symptoms of dengue fever, which is the sudden onset of a very high fever, um, a very bad headache, pain behind the eyes, really bad joint pain, um, and you don't feel like eating, you feel very tired, you may feel like vomiting, those are the symptoms of dengue fever. You must go and see a health professional straight away. What that, per what that doctor will do is assess to see if you have the signs, the danger signs for dengue fever, which could show that you are getting a severe dengue. The ministry will also take strict action against those who fail to clean the compounds and clear breeding grounds. Meanwhile, FBC News spoke to some private medical clinics around the country today and they've confirmed receiving an increasing number of patients who have shown up with dengue-like symptoms. Kelly Vatala, FBC News. 200 vehicles worth over $17 million was provided to Fiji by the Chinese government today. While receiving the vehicles, Prime Minister Vorengabani Marama says the kind donation will further enhance government service delivery. Ali Kimbia with the story. With the donation being one of the largest material projects from China to Fiji in recent years, Bani Marama says the vehicles will improve their outreach to the rural communities. Having more vehicles means we can respond more quickly to emergencies, address urgent needs of ordinary Fijians, and keep delivering on our agenda for rural outreach and development. The 200 vehicles includes 50 school buses, 30 ambulances, 50 police cars, 50 minibuses, and 20 panel vans. Bani Marama says various ministries must use the vehicles to deliver quality service to the people. These uh, vehicles will immediately be put to use and integrated within our existing government fleet under the management of the fleet management team within our Ministry of Economy. The Chinese government also provided extra assistance through spare parts and vehicle maintenance training. SAIC Motor has a service partner in Fiji and will provide two-year warranty for these vehicles. Just in two weeks' time, a technical service team is expected to arrive in Suva to give training for our Fijian technicians on vehicle maintenance. The Chinese government has stated that their assistance to Fiji is selfless and sincere without conditions. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Twenty lawyers newly admitted to the bar at the Suva High Court have been advised to respect all religions. This comes after the recent desecration of temples and churches around the country. Chief Justice Anthony Gates says it's disappointing to see that holy books and other items are being destroyed. Gates says the recent sacrilegious acts are hard to bear. He adds lawyers should recognize the rights of all Fijians as they have the right to worship freely 
without recrimination. You must demonstrate your tolerance and your respect for the religion of others. You should not be heard to vilify persons of a different race or religion to yourself. In Fiji, religious festivals bring us all together. They're colorful, friendly, and inclusive. That is what we want for Fiji. Police has launched an investigation into claims of alleged police brutality in the Western Division last month. Acting Deputy Police Commissioner Itendra Naya says they have received reports from two individuals claiming they were allegedly assaulted by police in Nandarivatu. He says an independent team has been appointed to investigate these claims. Naya says complaints against police officers will be thoroughly looked into by the force before it's forwarded to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. We do record statements of individuals who have reported these uh, matters, and we have uh, medical reports done. That's basically what we have done so far. We have recorded statements from these individuals. We have had them uh, medically report, uh, uh, medical report done up. Our investigation is not only handled by the police itself, but after the investigation is done, it is then sent to independent authorities such as the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions to be able to look at it and see if there is any loopholes in the investigation, then they order us to go and further investigate, etc., etc. So it's a very transparent and an open manner in which uh, we are investigating. We are a 50-year-old man convicted of raping and sexually assaulting his friend's 15-year-old daughter more than two years ago was sentenced in absentia to 12 years and four months imprisonment today. The man's name is being withheld to protect the victim. Pranita Prakash reports. The court heard that the victim's father had trusted the man and invited him to sleep over at his home in Nasinu in 2014. When he went to work, the father left his daughter in the man's care and that's when the sexual assault and rape took place. The victim was a girl who had considered the man as an uncle and a friend. The man was not present in court when he was sentenced today. He escaped from custody during a break on the first day of his trial. A bench warrant has been issued and his sentence will come into effect when he is arrested. The High Court judge said sexual exploitation of children within their own home has become a social menace. Once apprehended, the convicted child rapist will serve more than 10 years in prison before being eligible for parole. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Still to come, Langi Langi House projects wait for approval. And having spared Fiji, TC Gita affects New Zealand. Details after the break. Bula, kero mai singatoka, kero ndo tali taka na varorong na radio Fiji one ndo moi viti. Aya ora na rinse, uti kumina somu ti bola ndo tali taka na radio Fiji one ndo moi viti. Aya kuya zo sila tali. Tenants will not be able to move into the second phase Langilangi Houses project until it receives approval from the National Fire Authority and the Office of Health and Safety. The People's Community Network says they expect approval in about two weeks. Senia Nimboila reports. The Langilangi Housing second phase is currently getting its final touch-ups. And PCM Director Semiti Ngalawasa says they'll wait until the units are approved. We're just waiting for NFA uh, and also our FORTEC and uh, AAPI design to give us the, the completion. Uh, because uh, we, are, uh, we are undergoing what we call OHS in the housing because people are living in it. Uh, we would like to see that everything is um, safe for our residents. Galawasa says they are working to finalize the successful applicants who will have a chance to buy the units. We've got uh, 200 members uh, with us at the moment and uh, 36 will go into, into phase uh, 2.1 and another 36.2.2 and the rest of the 120 will go into phase 2. So we've marked all those down. And 72-year-old uh, Laisia Nambui says the dream of owning a good and affordable house will soon come true. 
We have been staying here in Jitu for almost 20 years, and we have been expecting this long time ago. I've already applied, and we hope that we in Jitu will be given the first chance. The PCN confirms that those living in Jitu estate will be given the first chance to purchase. However, they need to meet all the requirements. The second phase is comprised of 43 bedroom units and 36 two bedroom units. Sainiani Mbuela, FBC News. General Secretary for the Fiji Trades Union Congress, Felix Anthony, says they will still go ahead with the rally if they do not get the permit from police to have a march on Saturday. Anthony says they hope to have the permit before Saturday since they applied for it on the 21st of December last year. He says the march is necessary. Anthony says that the Suva City Council has given their approval and are now awaiting for police to issue the permit. Police say they will not comment on FTUC's permit for the march. The march is about the government intention to impose individual contracts on workers, the civil servants, teachers and in government owned entities. It is about the government breach of the agreement that FTUC and the employers have signed on the labour law review. This was to have been done some years ago, has not been done till today. This is about minimum wage where we have been campaigning for a $4 minimum wage. This is also to do with the workers' right to strike in this country. The French government will not change its process regarding visa application for Fijians who wish to travel to France. French Ambassador Sujiro Sim has confirmed Fijians may either have to go to Vanuatu or Manila to apply for their respective visas. The French Embassy closed their visa services late last year, creating a hassle for most Fijians who wish to travel to France. Ambassador Sim says it is unclear at this stage whether an alternative will be found in Fiji to process applications like the Schengen visa for European states. However, he'll try his best to work something out. This is not easy, it's not convenient, it is costly, and uh, I'm working on uh, possible alternatives which would uh, spare our Fijian uh, friends uh, the need to go to uh, Vanuatu, but those are medium to long term alternatives. World Hindi Day was celebrated at Indian High Commission of India in Suva today. This is an annual event which reminds the Indian diaspora in Fiji about the importance of their mother tongue Hindi, which was brought by their ancestors during the indenture system. Part of this celebration were people who have assisted and uplifted the teaching and learning of Hindi language around Fiji. Minister of the State for Human Resources, Satyapal Singh from India, also attended this celebration. The High Commission also rewarded three personalities in Fiji who had immensely contributed towards promotion of Hindi in the past years. This year, the National Fire Authority plans to open three more fire stations around the country. They will be located in Rakiraki, Bua and Savu Savu. NFA Chief Fire Officer Yunilao Modatai says this will help the authority provide better services to Fijians living in these areas. He says they are also in the process of recruiting more firefighters and all the equipment for these fire stations will be brought from overseas. Funds have been provided by the government. We are building stations and also we are recruiting fire officers. To, uh, we'll be having another recruitment soon and we're still building South South Mbua and Rakiraki at the moment. Well, the sting in the tale of Cyclone Gita, torrential rain flooded streets and houses in Kapiti overnight, forcing six households to evacuate. Around a dozen streets were closed until the water receded this morning. Well, in sports, it's building up for the Super Rugby season and we have all the latest. But up next is Kelly with the latest in business. Thanks, Amrita. Good evening. Coming up in business tonight, we have more on the newest restaurant business in Suva. And in Growing Fiji, Fiji Link VIP launch opens. Stay with us. Moala Rada Ranalika, Otikongona Town of Singapore, and Dotalifak and Avarong and Ambula Fan, number two in a serve. We are the Rasubuni Kurnabili, Borani Batskara and Barabin Arna, Dotal Takina Varong and Ambula Fan, number two in a serve. Bula! Bula FM, number 2 in Seri.
leading business tonight, a passion for food and designing has prompted the owner of Mezban to open up a second food outlet along Victoria Parade in Suva. The first outlet, which opened in MHCC in 2014, offers Bangladeshi and Arabic cuisine, while the new second outlet offers Indian and Thai cuisine. Seventy new jobs have been created following more than $500,000 investment. Owner Mohammed Allah Moznu has plans to expand further. We are planning to go in uh, this side, uh, there are other cities, sports city connecting, new connecting building. We are try, trying to negotiate to take one place, bigger space. So this is a very small room for us and uh, we are not taking like a big booking, say about we can even say like say about highest to 40 people. So we are uh, looking a bigger space, say about 100 plus. Time to join Rocco for the latest from the world markets. Thank you. Let's have a look at the global markets today. The U.S. dollar is on the rise again, extending its recovery helped by higher short-term Treasury yields. The Federal Open Market Committee minutes show they were firmly on track to raise interest rates again in March. Looking at the U.S. stock market indicators, the Dow Jones Index fared the worst, finishing 0.7% lower the S&P 500 and Nasdaq lost 0.6 and 0.2% respectively. Britain's unemployment rate has risen unexpectedly for the first time in almost two years. That's believed to be the cause of the pound sterling dropping 0.53% lower against the dollar. And that's all from me for now. Thank you. Thanks, Rocco. Looking at today's currency exchange rates set this morning for the Fijian dollar, the foreign exchange markets remained volatile. The Fijian dollar made against the Aussie dollar, the euro and the yen. On the commodities market, oil prices were down slightly at $61.15 a barrel. Gold continued to drop at $1,325.62 per ounce. And silver rose a few cents to close at $16.48 an ounce. In growing Fiji, Fiji Link officially opened the new domestic VIP launch last night. The Fiji Airways Men's Sevens team and coach Gareth Baber were at the launch. Fiji Airways CEO and Managing Director Andre Filion says it was due to the high demand from the domestic VIP guests that they had to open, open this launch. The launch has also been named the Flying Fijians Club in honor of all Fiji rugby teams, men's and women's side, who will be able to use the launch. When the um, Fijian 7s or the uh, 15s or the women's or women's, whichever, travels internationally, they are entitled to use this lounge. It's a nice quiet area where they can get some drink and food and relax and, and uh, basically enjoy a private, uh, private club. A big huge thank you for thinking ahead of us. Uh, we always talk about high performance sports, about how you think about the things that are going to come up. And we also talk about detail, the little detail. And when people do things like this for you uh, ahead of time without us knowing, um, it gives us a huge boost. That's business this evening. Here's Jamie now with sports. Thanks, Kelly, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, Fiji's sevens team leave for Vegas tournament. And Ron Bowler's ready to roll at triples meet. This and more coming up. The Fiji Airways men's sevens team has left for the Las Vegas sevens. While the obvious goal is to carry its form from Hamilton and win the USA sevens leg of the series, Captain Jerry Tuwai has once again asked fans to support the team regardless. Felipe Nakaso has more. 
The Fiji 7s team is fully aware of what is expected from them and will be taking its game at a time. A few years back, we can put uh, 50 points uh, against, uh, against the opponent. But now we really can't because all the teams know how to play 7s rugby. Captain Jerry Kiwai has also called on fans to be patient. Uh, keep, on, uh, keep on supporting the boys uh, no matter what uh, because we no lose. It does not change our color of our dish. It does not change the name of the team. It's still Fiji team. And uh, we just re really need your support. The side has also been working hard on winning the restarts as this is a key area of the game. Yes, this is uh, one of our main uh, set pieces in the game. Uh, uh, once you, you know that well, when we get the ball, we'll uh, score twice. The Fiji 7s team has won the Las Vegas tournament twice in 2015 and 2016, plus lost in the final against South Africa last year. The side begins its campaign against Russia at 12.06 p.m. next Saturday. They will then play France at 3.07 p.m. and face Kenya in the last pool match at 8.36 a.m. next Sunday. Philippe and I, Castle, FBC News. The 38-member Fiji Warriors under-23 extended squad started camp earlier today to prepare for the World Rugby Pacific Challenge Cup next month. The Senirusi Serubakula coach side has held on to the cup for the last two years. However, this is the first year under the new age-based format. The competition will be played between March 9th to 17th at Suva Zanz Stadium. Interesting. It will be interesting. Uh, uh, the, uh, we can say that uh, the game will be more faster and the intensity will be higher uh, and uh, we'll be looking at a lot of uh, young players uh, expressing their talent out there. It, uh, we, for me as a coach, I just can't wait uh, for the first uh, game to, to be played uh, because Samoa and Tonga they will be fielding in a stronger team and, uh, and uh, as well as uh, Japan and Japan has been doing that every year so it's not new to them and for our boys is to bring them together and groom them as a, as a team and uh, it's something that we, we, it's a work on for us. 81 athletes and officials will be recognized for their contribution to Fiji Sports tomorrow at the 2017 Fiji Sports Awards Nominees Night, an event to honor all nominees before the main awards night next month. The Fiji Sports Awards Committee received 81 plaques today from its official sponsor Sports World. The plaques will be presented to all 2017 nominees in recognition of their hard work and dedication last year. Meanwhile, the main awards night will be held on the 2nd of next month at the FMF Gymnasium. It is of great honor to be in partnership with Fiji Association of Sports to sponsor our country's sports achievers for this outstanding performance in 2017. We have been continuously sponsoring this sports award from 2014 and is an indication for Sports World's commitment for the promotion and sports recreation development for our Fijians. Former Fiji Under-20 rep Alex Hodgman will start at prop for the Auckland Blues in the opening Super Rugby match against the Highlanders. Blues coach Tana Umanga has named four debutants for the game. Suva Volleyball will not be part of the Coconut Vibe Volleyball Tournament which starts in the capital tomorrow. The Suva Association is yet to pay its affiliation fees to the Fiji Volleyball Federation and has been excluded from any immediate plans for this year's volleyball season. Meanwhile, 30 men's and 15 women's teams have been confirmed to, to compete at the two-day event. They just did not meet the uh, requirements for the payment of affiliation fees that closed on the 16th of uh, February, which was last week Friday. Um, but they haven't come back to us on, on anything. Um, uh, come Friday, the, the total number of teams that were confirmed to be affiliated for this new volleyball season was excluding Suva. An exciting weekend ahead for local bowlers competing at the National Triples Competition at the Suva Bowling Club. More than 25 teams, including selected players to the Commonwealth Games, will be part of the two-day event. Roni Tuinuku reports. The tournament will be a good testing ground for the Fiji team to the Commonwealth Games to showcase their individual skills. Most probably all the players that will be selected to represent Fiji in the Commonwealth Games will be playing this weekend. The event is expected to attract new faces to the spot and boost bowling in the country to a new level. It's no longer old people's game. In other countries, 
some of the countries, they don't even look at people that are over 25 years to represent their country. Meanwhile, Kontiki Finance has shown interest in being part of this year's event and aims to go a long way. And we are one of the newest finance companies in Fiji, and we thought a marriage of the oldest and the newest might be a good idea. The national triples will be held on Saturday and Sunday at the Suba Bowling Club. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Another milestone achievement for sports in the country with the formation of the Gymnastics Federation of Fiji. Federation Director Robert Yield says its goal is to expand the sport locally and introduce it in schools. Um, right now, the Gymnastics Federation of Fiji, we're looking to promoting a lot more gymnastic sports within villages, within clubs, within any sort of community situation. Um, what we've got happening right now is in a couple of villages in Saru, we've got Naloa and Dranikula, and we've got the villages actually performing aerobics routines, and last year we had a competition. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media right after the break. A look at what to expect with the Samsung S9 to be launched next month. That's coming up. Bula, Kero Mai Singatoka, Kero Ndotali Taka Navarorong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have a recommendation for the Bola, the Talit, and the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have a recommendation for the Talit, the Burra Mai Naomani, and the Talit, 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 what's in store for Samsung next flagship phone. The S9 is rumored to have better camera features and processor and as usual differs from the S8 and the Note 8. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we are should the French government reconsider having visa applications done in Fiji. Yes, I think it's, uh, they should reconsider the decision because it's a great inconvenience to the, the people who want to apply for Scandinavian visas. Uh, it's much easier, even I had applied, so it's much easier if we have it nearby. And this is going to be tough for Fijians to go all the way to Vanuatu, so the French government should at least reconsider their decision. I think they should, because uh, it's too expensive for us. Uh, I think we should be going directly. Uh, of uh, getting other means to get to other countries. We now join Angie for weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It was a much milder day across the country with isolated afternoon showers in some areas. Well, who doesn't like rain after a hot day? Let's quickly check out the west for today. Weather is a bliss here, totally sunny with all greens. So to cool all the heat off, expect rain later tonight. Eastwards from Back Harbour to Suva, sunnier day as well. Afternoon showers are becoming a trend here. And up north, a much brighter yet breezy day. This side could also expect showers. At sea, east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. As for the mariners, low tide will be at 11.36 p.m. with high tide at 5.42 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.03. Tomorrow's temps, bow will be the coolest at 29 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, we can also expect few light showers. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. I'm Rita. Recapping the main stories, Fijians warned about other diseases due to dengue outbreak. Fiji gets 200 vehicles worth more than $17 million. And lawyers told to respect all religions. Of these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, 
This week, we are asking should strict penalties be implemented against those pedestrians who use mobile phones while crossing roads? Visit our FBC website to answer. Well, before we go, our shot of the day. Seriana Simio captured this sunset at the Muscat Cove Island Resort. Well, you can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FBC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable evening. Good night. Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have a recommendation for the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I am going to have a little talent. 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 I am going to have a little talent.